The Awakening presents Going Deeper with Ben Cerullo, a conversation designed to help believers live victoriously through God's Word. Here's our host, Ben Cerullo. All right, well, welcome to the podcast today. We're excited that you got a chance to join with us. It's not an accident, I believe. We're going to go deeper today and uh, tear open this blog. But yes, we are. I'm here again with the Bishop Jacques Thomas, and What's we're going to... We're going to break it open today. We are, man. And I'm looking forward to this one from burden to blessings, man. I think this is going to be a good blog. But before we go into it, um, you and I had the opportunity to travel down to Costa Rica, man, and to really do a, a four-night crusade uh, with Pastor, uh, well, with Apostle Ronnie Chavez, man. Just give me a little bit of, uh, we haven't talked much, so just tell me what was your experience and, and let the people know how it went. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it's always good to go overseas and be able to you know, be an ambassador, yeah. you know, carry the gospel is an honor. And, uh, you know, we've had together, you and me have been all yeah. over the world, so many <laughs> crisscrossing everywhere, tearing it up for Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the cool thing is when you go, you know, God sent you on an assignment, mm. you know, and that's one thing I've always rested in when I go somewhere that I'm not going under my own strength, but God has already gone before mm -hmm. me to make the mm -hmm. way. So we did have those few nights of crusades and uh, training meetings in the daytime, a youth meeting, a women's yeah. meeting, and, yeah. and we saw miracles happen. We saw people, the greatest miracle, salvation. Yes. We saw people give their heart to Jesus, and uh, man, it was good. It was good. Dude. It's always good to see good friends, Apostle Ronnie and our good friend uh, Gerald down there, yeah. holding things down, our translator, and getting to eat some good food while we're on the road. You know, that's uh, our second anointing is mm -hmm. that eating thing. So <laughs> pray is. for us that we can keep that in check. Yeah, I do need to keep that in check. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I had the uh, opportunity to watch you speak at the uh, women's. Yeah, uh, there's the first time for everything. <laughs> yeah. How was that, man? Well, that, that was the first time I've ever done an all women's meeting, but that, you know, they really wanted to do it. And I think man, well, it was one of the best meetings that we had. I yeah. didn't know what to do. What, I, God, what do I speak about? He's just yeah. like, well, they're in every meeting that you have, so you don't need to change the message. Yeah. You know? So just come and share. And that's what we did. And I mean, God, there was more healings and, and breakthrough, I believe, in that meeting than mm -hmm. any of the other ones. And, you know, just even hearing the testimonies that came in and uh, especially the one from the, the pastor's uh, daughter down there who came and said, you know, when you were here a few years ago when we came and, and we ministered, you know, how her life was so impacted and radically changed. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and just to, you know, she was so excited to come tell us that, you know, four or five years ago when we were there, what God did in her life and how mm -hmm. she is just different. And now she had a friend who got radically impacted at the meeting and it never gets old. That's what it's about. No. You know, we're there to, to see no. lives change, not just to give you, you know, a few points on how to change your life, but to, I love when Paul says in Romans, you know, that I long to come to you, that mm -hmm. I may impart to you a spiritual, um, to bring you impartation, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. that you would be established. And it's yeah. through that impartation that believers become established mm -hmm. and uh, in the, the call that God has for them. And that's what we go that's what we go to bring is yeah. that impartation. Yeah. So, yeah. man, it was good. I can't it's wait good. to go back. Well, we're going to be headed back, man. I think we're headed back in a number of different places we're going to be going yeah, to. the doors are opening. And, you know, just one thing about overseas is so awesome is the hunger that people have. Yeah. It's different than, you know, the U.S. and even parts of Europe, different places in the world. Mm -hmm. People are so content. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're not hungry. They're satisfied. You know, they, they feel like they have enough of God. Not everybody, you know, but in general. Yeah. And when you go overseas, the one thing that I find the most rewarding when I get to minister is just the hunger that the people have. Mm -hmm. They come with expectation. They come hungry. And, you know, I always preach that, you know, the key ingredient to a meal that's served is not the food that you put on the table. It's not the ingredients that go into the meal. It's the hunger that comes to the table. If mm -hmm. nobody's hungry, you can serve the greatest meal ever, but nobody really wants to eat it. It, exactly it right. doesn't have the same appeal to them. But and if you bring hungry people, it doesn't matter what you serve on there. Put a piece of cardboard, some little salt, some <laughs> butter. Man, they're, they're going to tear it up. You know, so that's, man, overseas, they want to eat the word. They do. They do. And, and I think the, the people overseas, uh, I, always, I always love how the Lord uses you in the manner of... Um, just sometimes the prophetic message and, and how God just all of a sudden you can see him staring you in another direction and, and, and how 
the people begin to just awaken to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And receive that in response to that message. That's that's the that's probably one of the greatest feelings when I begin to look out and go, wow, here it comes. Here it comes. Y'all get ready. <laughs> Hold on. This wasn't part of the plan. Exactly right. Well, that's the thing that, you know, when we all of us follow the Lord, we can't be so set in our ways you know mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. may teach you one way at school but you know what god may say i, I got a different direction yeah yeah i'm not over there today take a left instead of a right mm-hmm. you know so it's it's being able to just let go yeah and and follow god and, and it's when we do those when we find those places i mean that's when god moves i remember you know it's awkward sometimes mm-hmm. i remember in mexico one time that uh god god said go left when i was planning to go right and <laughs> They introduced me, and man, God said, don't say anything. And I remember there was 30 or 40 minutes of me just standing there with the <laughs> microphone waiting on God to release me. And I remember, man, it just, the Holy Ghost hit the place. After 30 or 40 minutes or whatever it was, it felt like three hours. Yeah, yeah. People started weeping. They started breaking. I mean, the power of God hit the place. You know, we preached at the very end after mm-hmm. we ministered, and mm-hmm. God moved. And, you know, we got to be willing to to follow Him. yeah. Yep, very much so. And I think that's the key, you know, is follow the Spirit. Where yeah. the Lord leads you, you got to be willing to go there. And I think sometimes we have to rest in that God says, I give you this assignment. Yeah. That, what a great honor that is when the Lord says, I assign you with this. And that's, that's, that's because he can trust you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I love to see that. I love to see that. Love to see that. Well, what about this blog today, man? man. What about this blog? What, We're t- about to take a left. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, from I want burden to, get back to blessings. Here. You know, that's, uh, you know, like we talked a little bit about last week, you know, God uses all things together for good. Yes. You know, to those who love him and are called mm-hmm. according to his purpose, you mm-hmm. know, from... There is a way to, you know, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Exactly Take right. my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden mm-hmm. is light. You know, so we've got to first come to Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the requirement. If you don't come to me, you can't take my yoke. Yep. And, you know, the burdens come in many ways. And mm-hmm. just, you know, following the Holy Ghost right now, I think a lot of us are under the burden of religion. Mm-hmm. We're under the burden of this tradition and this legalistic mm-hmm. spirit that uh, keeps us from the freedom that God has for us. That, yeah. you know, our study of the word, our times in prayer, it's all under this this heavy burden. And when you think about just the him addressing the children of Israel at that time, he was referring to the, the rabbis who put yokes upon the people. Yeah. The original yeah. meaning of that whole thing was they, you know, the rabbis would sit around like we are, mm-hmm. they would discuss a topic or an issue, mm-hmm. and when they came to a conclusion on this is what it meant, they called it a yoke, mm-hmm. and that's what they would put on the people. So mm-hmm. Jesus said, you know, don't take the yokes of religion, that's take exactly my right. yoke. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the freedom. <laughs> exactly right. So uh, take my yoke upon you, my burden is light. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, how do we go from burden to blessing? We, we come to Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's kind of yeah. the key. You, if you're carrying a heavy load, you come to Jesus. That's exactly right. And you got to be willing to give him that burden. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I remember one time uh, you know, preaching that message, you know, the burden, ex- you know, exchanging burdens. You know, the thing is that I saw the example of, you know, you take a young ox, you know, and, and you put him with a, an older ox. The old ox is going to carry that younger ox so he learns how to be able to plow that field. And I said, you know, my illustration then was, he says, take my yoke. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're yoking up with God, I'm yoking up with him, with Jesus to say, you're going to carry this. Yeah. I'm going to, yes, I'm in this, but you're carrying the weight of this. That's yeah. not on me. I, I'm, I'm connected to you. I'm forever with you, but you're carrying this burden. It is it's weighted upon you and not me as much. And I think that's the thing about when we look at religion, it's, a burden is it any emotional thing yeah that is difficult for you to bear yeah and that's religion it is, it is difficult for you to bear that emotionally let's just be honest with you you can't carry the religious things that we create in the church people can't bear it no and that's what caused them to fall out the church it wears walk you away. out yeah. it does man walk away from it 
Yeah, well, it's, you know, heavy, that word tribulation, you mm -hmm. know, in this blog we talk about it, it means pressure, mm -hmm. you know, it, it means uh, oppression, it means yep. stress, That's anguish, exactly right. adversity, you yeah. know, affliction, it's mm -hmm. crushing, it's mm -hmm. squashing, squeezing, <laughs> yeah. you know, those are like the, what, what the word tribulation means, mm -hmm. and uh that's where a lot of us are under is this this pressure mm -hmm. to try to perform. That's exactly right. You know, it's the it's there's a it, the fine line. You know, it's it all depends on God, yet it all depends on us. Yeah. You know, the, it, it is all God's, but yet we can't just sit there and do nothing. So exactly right. it's that fine line the enemy manipulates, and man in his own humanity and and carnality trying to figure it all out. Well, I think this would please God, or if we yeah. did it like and instead of just resting in God, realizing that you know that God's grace covers us, mm -hmm. but we got to put our hand to the plow. That's exactly right. You, know, you can't just you got to put the hand to the plow, not look back like mm -hmm. the Bible says, move forward. And uh, if you make mistakes, you just keep moving forward. <laughs> don't don't go backwards, yep. and and you keep coming into Him. Um, Casting off that pressure. Yeah. Well, and, and casting it off, you know, casting is to throw off of you, get it off of you, you know, and, and that's what we have to do with religion. You know, let's, I love where you're going with this is that we have to throw off religion and yeah. receive the freedom that has been given unto us. And when you're always trying to operate in that religious mindset, that you're going to, you're going to find yourself choking. Yeah. You're going to, well, <laughs> you know, if you're trying to follow the Lord and you feel like you're under that burden, you know, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, look, there's times you don't want to pray. There's times you don't feel like, you know, getting into the word. That's yeah. different. Yeah. It's, it's, I used to, I lived like this, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I follow all the old school guys that, man, they prayed like 10 oh, hours yeah. a day. They read yeah. their word. Their knees had calluses on them because yeah. they were on them so much. So I figured, man, well, if they did that, <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah, I knew when we would go on the road, I'd literally have a list. All right, wake up at seven, the meetings at 10 in the morning or whatever time yeah. at night. Wake up at six or seven, you know pray for three hours, mm -hmm. make sure I fasted up till, you know, to the meeting, yeah. make sure I had so much time in my word, so much time in prayer, so much time to set aside just to prepare for the, mm -hmm. the message. And look, dude, sometimes I'd be tired or, you know, the guys were, you guys are going out to get breakfast yeah. or something. And I'm, you know, I'm like, man, I'm lonely. I like, a, <laughs> like some fellowship, but I got into bondage. You know, if yeah. I didn't, I felt like, man, if I don't get eight hours of prayer in today, then man, I'm not going to preach good. Yeah. And uh, the people aren't going to receive their break. You know, it's, those are the, that's man-made religiosity, mm -hmm. you know, and God set me free from that. And the enemy tries to always pull me back into that. So mm -hmm. I have to guard myself to just you know, rest in God. Some of the best meetings I've had is when I've been trying to pray, pass out, and wake up because the phone's ringing, hey, your ride's here. <laughs> and I got to go down. I didn't have any time to get into my message. And man, the Holy Ghost moves. Yeah. And so uh, it's resting in Him. We do yeah. want to take time to study, of to course. pray, but it can become chains. Well, it becomes very much a chain to you. You know, you, you, there is the studying process that you have to do. But at the same time, I believe when you study... And you begin to learn how to rest to the Lord. That what you put in is going to come out. Yeah. And that's the blessing. You know yeah. what I mean? The talking from this perspective, you know, casting off those burdens, those things that man said you have to do. Yeah. And learning how to rest in the Word, and the Word is rested in you. Guess what? You're going to see the fruit of that. You're yeah. going to see the blessing come from that. What is the blessing of that? I believe how God used you, how you were able to walk by led by the Spirit and not led by some religious. Uh, robot yeah. or system that sits in front of you. You were able to free yourself from that yoke of bondage and really be released into what God wanted you to do in that assignment. Yeah. You know, the burdens, they, they come in the form of those religious things. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all burdens try to bring us outside the blood mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They try to bring us uh, into the, this world system. And, you know, that's like we read here in Romans, the verse mm -hmm. we have for this blog, it yeah. says... And not that we would also, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he's given us. You know, it's, you know, James, like we shared last week, count it all joy when, you, yeah. you know, trials and tribulations mm -hmm. come. You know, in the world, we, 
we have issues that we face. You yep. know, there's there's a lot happening right now in the world that we live in. It is. Uh, on all different fronts mm-hmm. from, you know, uh, wars and rumors of wars, terrorism, uh, diseases and sickness, um, financial issues. There's, yeah. They seem, you know, these are tribulations. These mm-hmm. are trials that, that we all go through. It exactly rains right. on the just and, and on the, the unjust. You know, exactly the, right. the, the stuff's going to come. It and, is. Uh, and so when we take ourselves outside of Christ, now we're vulnerable mm. to coming under the burden. I love, you know, John sixteen thirty three. Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you would have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. Mm-hmm. You know, so he says, in me is where peace is found. That's exactly right. In the world is tribulation, yep. and you need to come in me. Yeah, yeah. You come to live in me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's because I've overcome the world, world, and that's yeah. the blessing. It is the blessing. To know that, you know what, this is not my reality. That's exactly right. I don't have to accept this. I get to choose my attitude. I get to choose, you know, am I going to allow this to oppress me or am I going to rejoice in the Lord always? And again, I say rejoice. <laughs> well, you got to, you know, when you look at that word tribulation and you take, you know, as you read all those different adjectives of it, you know, the oppression, yeah. you know, you got to go back. What did Jesus, why did, you know, God sent Jesus, quoting, we look at Acts 10. Yeah. They, what the appointed time God yeah. sent His Son what yeah. to deliver all those who are oppressed? Yeah. You know what I mean. Under this tribulation, under this hardship, under this pressure, when you look at it, if I'm in Christ, I got this peace. He said, "I overcome that. Yeah, I overcome the system of the world. I, I beat that. You rest in the peace which is in Me. That's where you rest at because you don't have to worry about the stress, the oppression. And I believe that's what God really wants His children to rest in. And that's even in your ministry, your personal ministry, whatever you're facing in life, you got to learn how to say, you know what, I'm going to cast this burden off yeah. and I'm going to enjoy the blessings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And look, if you find yourself, you're under a burden in your life, whether it's trying to please God, because he's already pleased in you, mm-hmm. you know, you can't try to earn uh, his good pleasure for your yeah. life. You know, he, he loves you. Uh, so you also, you know, you want to do things that, to please God, but you're not going to earn it. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's, he's crazy about all of us, just the way that we are. Uh, he wants us to live our lives according to his word, yep. to obey it. Um, but that doesn't change, you know, his, the way that he loves us. So if, if you find yourself under a burden, whether it's from religion, trying to please God, or, or maybe it's just, you know, the stress of life, trying to yeah. pay the bills, keep yeah. the lights on, you got a family... You got kids and you're a single mother or father and you just, man, I got kids and, you know, sometimes, you know, they can push us to the limits yes, of can. all limits. And, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, but I think that the amazing part is, you know, if you have burdens, you can cast those on. Yeah, you, you do. You know what I mean? You can give them to them and you may, and I, I love this part because it produces perseverance. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the, the pressure, this burden, what I'm feeling, tribulation. Well, guess what? The more I cast it on him, it's going to produce a character. What yeah. is that? The character of Christ. Yeah. I'm going to be able to walk in the freedom. You know what I mean? What is going to take place? My faith is going to grow. I'm going to see things happen in my life. I'm going to see some development. And there's going to be perseverance and character building and, and hope. Yeah. The more I cast it off, the more I put it over on him, the more and more I, I am building uh, what we talked about many times before. I'm building... Uh, I'm building my identity. Yeah. My identity is beginning to shape and, and take form of who I am in Christ. Yeah. And I don't have to bear these things. It's, it's him to take and those things. You're getting that history with God mm-hmm. and something mm. to lean on. And, you yeah. know, that's something that our human nature wants it easy. Yep. We want it like right now. We want the quick fix. That's why, you know, the books with all the catchy titles, mm-hmm. you know, unlock your destiny and, you know, all those things are good you know i'm not trying to say they're bad but the bad thing comes when we're trying to like get the quick fix it's exactly right and it never happens no you know and it's i see it when we go to you know we've grown up around ministry Mm -hmm. our whole life you know you got the conference junkies they're running from place (laughs) to place thinking they're going to get their breakthrough and i believe the breakthroughs happen exactly right you know so many times i'm ministering and i'm looking at the people on the altar and god's like you know don't pray for that one pray for Mm -hmm. that one it's not Mm -hmm. that he doesn't want them they're trying to get the quick fix. The other person's broken. They, That's you know, exactly they come right. to God the right way. They're, yeah. And those are the ones who get the breakthrough. The, you got to go through it. You have to. There's not a way around <laughs> it. 
you got to go through, through it. You and have to. Because it's in that, you know, that you are building these things in your life, mm -hmm. the character, the perseverance. Mm -hmm. And it's only through that that you find hope and hope that does not disappoint like this verse exactly says. Right. And so, look, we talk about casting your burdens on the Lord and you may not know how to do that. Maybe you've gone and you've laid before God and you've, you've prayed and said, God, I give this to you. But you know what? You're still like at the end of yourself and overwhelmed. Yeah, I just want to encourage you that uh, the way that you do that is you, you continue to stay there and wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You continue to bring it and lay there and put your hope and your trust in him. You do. And, and you don't give up. Mm -mm. And you don't stop early. You know, it, it may take a week, it may take a month, it may take a year. Some of you have been laying in that place for a long time. But you're going to find the hope that you need to sustain yourself uh, by coming and waiting on God. Yeah. Not being in a hurry. No other agenda. You know, sometimes God doesn't want to hear your prayer list. He just mm -hmm. wants you to come and sit with him. Which is the best thing that you can learn. I know we did a blog about that some time back, um, talking about, you know, solitude, you yeah. know, but you got to learn how to just wait. Yeah. Just be quiet. The hardest just, thing you'll ever do, do in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just wait on the Lord and, and just sit there and allow him to do what he wants to do in your life. And I believe that's the service. Um, I believe that's just saying, look, what do you want? Yeah. What do you want today from me? What, what am I in this process? I'm just waiting for you. I'm going to cast the burdens because I know without a shadow of a doubt, as you say, go back, I have history with you. Yeah. And in the history, I can look and see every time uh, that I ran into a trouble, every time there was pressure or stress, when I cast it on you, you took care of it. Yeah. And you have to know, you have to have history with God. And I think that's one thing um, that going deeper is all about is helping the, the saints of God understand that um, as they begin to grow spiritually, understand your history also, also yeah. with God. You, yeah. you, because that helps you go further. That helps the roadmap that lays out before you. And when you come to the place that you have the tribulation, the, the pressures of life coming upon you, you can look back and say, I cast it off on God. Yeah. And last time he did it. It's the worst thing for me to hear when you ask a, a person, well, what did he do for you last? And they, can, and they say, hmm... I don't know. It's like, wait a minute. You should know. Yeah. Well, you haven't been spending time with him. <laughs> That's the key. You yeah. haven't spent time enough with him to be able to cast anything and put it at his feet to say, I don't, I don't want to deal with this. I can't handle this pressure. So you have to be able to say, oh, I know what he did for me last time. Yeah. He delivered me from this. He took care of this. Well, I think the way you know we can really under, really grab a hold of that and make it real in our lives is is not just running to God and pouring out the list of, God, I need you to do this, and just running. It's, it's waiting in that place until all of a sudden you get the revelation. You know, they, they weren't glorying in their issue. Mm -hmm. Like it says, and not, we also glory in tribulations. The reason they were glorying in this, the reason James says, count it all joy when mm -hmm. you're trial, is because they understood that it was already done. It's exactly right. So their joy came from, this is already done. done. So when they saw it, they realized <laughs> that, my God has already done this. That's why, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus says, in me, you will have peace. In the world, you'll have tribulation. Yeah. But I've overcome the world. So we find the burden lifts when we realize it's already done. Yes. So you come, you express what you need, you know, you with thanksgiving, you make your wants and requests known mm -hmm. to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart. It's that peace of God comes when you realize, man, it's already done. It's done. And that's and I love that part to be able to say it's done. Yeah, that's it's the finished. perspective that we've got to, you know, keep our mind focused. Yep. And then, you know, you can take heart. You can you can move forward knowing that uh, God's in control and yep. he's done it. It's yep. finished. Yep. You know, it yep. is truly finished. Yep. That's and, exactly uh, right. Sooner, you know, the natural is going to catch up with the supernatural. Come on, brother. <laughs> so it's, uh, that's where it's at. So look, we're going to pray for you real quick today. If you've got some burdens in your life, whether you need to shake them off, uh, religious burdens or just the burdens of life, man, you're just tired. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to pray that God will just give you the ability to see 
that it's already finished. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what it's about. So, um, just remind you real quick before we pray that if you, you know, like we do every week, if you got prayer needs, be sure to reach out on the website, send us an email because we got a team that wants to pray with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you can feel all alone sometimes. Sometimes you don't know where to turn and you know, it's totally, you know, a confidential thing. You can reach out to somebody who cares about you, who will pray with you and stand with you, and you may not you know, have someone like that in your life. So we just want to remind you, you could do that at myawakening.com. But uh, let's just take a moment today before we go just to, to go to the Lord and, and, and to pray and to uh, lay these burdens down. So, Father, we just come before you today because you are the I Am. There is nobody beside you. You are the Lord God Almighty. You are the maker and creator of, of every good and perfect thing. And Lord, we just we give you thanks and praise. We take a moment right now, Lord, just to, just to pause and to exalt your name, to give you glory, for you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the Great I Am, the Prince of Peace, everlasting God. You are, God, we could be here all day just declaring just how awesome and good and faithful you are. And so, Lord, right now I lift up those who are going through burdens and carrying heavy loads in their lives right now. Father, I pray that right now the eyes of their understanding would be open. God, that you would, you, the Bible says that you are the lifter of our heads. So, God, right now I pray that you would reach down in the power of the Holy Spirit and lift their head from the midst of their burden, that they would see you, Lord, that they would see that it is finished, that there is nothing that is too big for you, that nothing is impossible for him who believes. So I speak to their faith and I say, grow, rise in the name of Jesus right now. God, I pray for their their understanding of the, the, the completeness of what you finished and accomplished on the cross. God, let that take root deep in their soul in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would just remove the, the heaviness that the pressure would lift right now in the name of Jesus, that they would feel the peace that passes all understanding right now, Lord. Let it flood their soul. I speak peace to you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak joy to your soul in the name of Jesus right now. And I just rebuke heaviness. I rebuke the pressure. I rebuke those trials and tribulations. And I say, take your hands off of God's people right now. And I minister freedom. I say, be free in the name of Jesus right now. Receive your freedom. Receive your sight right now to see your awesome God. And I pray, Holy Spirit, just stir them on the inside. Let faith arise. Let your word arise. Let hope arise right now in the name of Jesus to grab hold. You are our hope, God. So I pray that you would just, that they would feel you right now surrounding them. Encourage them right now. Spirit of the living God, we give you thanks and praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, that it is finished, that every sickness, every disease, all lack and poverty and destruction, every spirit that would try to devour and destroy, God, everything is defeated today. Everything is beneath you, for you have the name which is above every name. And so right now, over these people, over their situations, we declare and we release the name of Jesus And we command everything to take your place, get beneath it, bow down to his name right now in Jesus' name. Spirits of cancer, infirmity, pain, and suffering, family issues, relationship problems, financial burdens, every burden right now, bow your knee to the name of Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We exalt you. We worship you. I just want to encourage you right now, if you're listening, just take a moment. Just begin to praise God. Begin to thank him for what he's done. Just open your mouth and just say, thank you, Jesus. Just begin to give him praise and glory. In the midst of whatever you may be going through, just take this moment to take your eyes off your situation and just exalt him. Just magnify him for he is he sits on the throne right now. Everything is beneath him. He is the ruler of everything. So just begin to praise him right now. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you. God, I thank you right now that lives are being changed. I thank you that burdens are being lifted right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the this weight that they have been carrying, God, they will carry it no longer. I declare this is a new day over your life. I speak a fresh and a new day. A new door is opening to you in Jesus' name. And I command the door of your yesterday to be closed in Jesus' mighty name, that that burden would be locked out of your life forever in the name of Jesus. 
praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, man, God is good. Yes, he is, man. He's all moving. the time. He's and, all the time. Uh, don't forget it. You know, come to him. In the world, you will have trouble, but in him, you will have peace because he's overcome. That's where your peace comes from. Not that your problem went away, but that you realize it's, it's taken care of. Well, and that's the assurance to rest in, to come to him yeah. and rest in his peace. You know, and God, I, I, one thing I've learned over the years, and, you know, we've been in ministry quite a long time, and I think we've, we're at that point we've grown, you know, outside of the rim of, of uh, just what we've taught. We've learned to add more, yeah. you know, add more to what the teachers have taught us. And I learned over the years how to really come to a place of just resting. Yeah. Just resting and knowing that God's already done it. Jesus has yeah. done it. It's well, that, done. I mean, the perfect example is him on the sleep in the boat. Yeah. While everybody, you know, the boat's filling up with water. <laughs> what are you sleeping? We're going to die, Jesus. <laughs> you know. What are you freaking out? I'm in the boat. <laughs> I'm here. You're not going to sink. You know. And, and just There may be water coming in, but you're not going to sink. sink. You know, you're not going to go under. Yeah. You just got to believe that. You have to believe that. So that's Amen. good. That's a good Amen. one. Well, just want to thank you for uh, tuning in today, whether you're watching this on video or if you're listening to the podcast today. And God's got a great plan for you. God is uh, building an army, and you're part of it. God wants you to not pray for revival, but be the revival. So it's revival time. Be sure to join us next week, each and every week, where we're going deeper in God's Word. We'll see you then. If you would like to hear other Going Deeper topics from Ben Cerullo or would like to know more about The Awakening, visit us at myawakening.com.